The Sony ZV-E10 and Nikon Z30 are both APS-C cameras, but because different manufacturers created them, I was surprised to see how different the color science is. They both have some great strengths and weaknesses, and in this video, I plan to show you what those are so you can make an informed purchasing decision. I've owned the ZV-E10 for almost two years, and I've used it in real-world situations on both professional work, and I've used it as my main B-cam for some of my videos for both YouTube and clients. I rented the Nikon Z30 from Lens Rentals to see if it's a better beginner camera than the ZV-E10. The lenses I use for the photo and video test for the Nikon Z30 are as follows. The kit lens is 16 to 50 millimeter f3.5 to 6.3, a 50 millimeter f1.8, and a 24 to 70 millimeter f4. This was a nice matchup to the lenses I already owned for the ZV-E10, which was a kit lens, the 16 to 50 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6, a 50 millimeter f1.8, and a 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8. We are going to cover the side-by-side -side comparison, specs, and real-world usability. If you're into videos like this one, make sure to like this video so I know to make more videos like this one. And that's what we're gonna cover today on the Film Alliance. If you've been in the market for a new beginner camera, then you may have gotten overwhelmed with the many options that are out there. If you landed here, then that means that you're this far down the rabbit hole, and my job is to give you some clarity and peace of mind. Don't worry. Either of these cameras will be great for you, no matter what you're shooting. If you stick around, I will give you all the similarities, pros and cons, and information that you need to make an informed purchasing decision. To start off, we know whom these cameras are marketed towards. The Nikon Z30 and the ZV-E10 are both marketed towards vloggers, content creators, and live streamers. But ultimately, I would say both of these cameras are for anyone who wants to break away from using their smartphone as their A-cam. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the differences, let's talk about the similarities. Both cameras are compact, interchangeable lens cameras. Both cameras can shoot in 4K up to 30 and 1080 up to 120. They weigh under 400 grams, have digital stabilization, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, a three inch articulating LCD touchscreen, continuous autofocus, micro HDMI, USB-C, mic ports, hot shoe, one mounting point, 1.5 times crop, no viewfinders, and they both do not have built-in ND filters. As you probably already know, the Nikon Z30 and the ZV-E10 are both APS-C cameras. If you need clarification about the differences between full frame and APS-C, I made an entire video comparing full frame and APS-C, and if you wanna check it out, I'll leave that in the description. Also, the Nikon Z30 doesn't crop in at 4K video at 30 frames per second, whereas the ZV-E10 does. But the ZV-E10 does not crop in at 4K 24, which is pretty much where I leave it to shoot all of my videos. All right, so before we start, I wanna say when we are comparing two very capable cameras like this, I find that no matter what the camera's advertised dynamic range is, it's the lens that's on the front of the camera and the person behind it that will truly make a difference. So don't get too hung up on much of these details. Instead, I would suggest just getting out there and using your camera, shooting with it, and understanding how to use and expose your camera correctly. If you're interested in learning exposure, I made a video about that. And if you're interested in learning about aperture priority, I made a video about that, and I'll leave both of those in the description. This leads me to the next real world question for you. Because both cameras do not have an EVF, how important is the three inch display to you? In my experience, it's pretty essential. The LCD screen on the Nikon Z30 has 1.04 million dots, whereas the ZV-E10 has 921,600. Some people say it doesn't matter, but to me it does. If you're not hooked up to an external monitor and you have to use focus peaking on your display, when you want to ensure that you're nailing focus, especially in high key environments, then the display really does matter. And in this case, the Z30 has a sharper display, so that one goes to the Z30. Before, I've come home from a shoot and I've looked at the footage and the subject was barely out of focus, but definitely and unfortunately noticeable. But if you are not one who depends on manual focus and you don't need focus peaking, then the display shouldn't be a problem. Here at the Film Alliance, I think we can all agree that one of the hardest parts about creating a video is finding the right music that perfectly complements the story you are trying to tell. You want it to be perfect, and you want it to carry the viewer seamlessly through the end of the video. 
Track Club allows you to do this by being able to infinitely customize the stems of any song, muting or soloing instruments, adjusting volume levels, and speeding up or slowing the BPM to match the energy of the video. It gives you a greater level of creative control over your sound, all without leaving your browser. The first step in my creative process is deciding what filters match the vibe I'm going for or a particular part of a video. I've been able to take my videos to a whole new level since I started using Track Club. Try it out for yourself. I'll leave a link in the description for a free one month full access trial. Now back to our video. Although both cameras have articulating touchscreens, I try not to touch the screen at all because finger oils will grease up the screen, making it much tougher to see in sunny environments. Rather than touching your touchscreen, I much prefer to have buttons to touch on the outside of the camera, and that leads me to the next topic, buttons. The Nikon has front and rear command dials rather than having both on the back, as the Sony does. If you're a Sony user, then the ZV-E10 is easier to navigate because all of the cameras that I own are Sony cameras, so it made it pretty simple for me to pick up the ZV-E10 and just know where everything is. But the Nikon has more buttons on the outside. Because of the wider variety of buttons on the Z30, then the buttons go to the Z30. The Nikon Z30 also has a mode and user preset dial, which is super helpful for hybrid shooters. Going every time into settings to change the modes of the ZV-E10 is a bit of a hassle. So I really appreciate that Nikon Z30 included that on their body. Speaking about body, that's the next topic. The ZV-E10's body is slimmer and has less of a grip and I feel as though it could slip out of your hand easier. The Z30 is definitely better when it comes to ergonomics holding the camera. So either way, I would say purchase a cage for either one of these cameras because that will give you a better grip and protect it in case it falls. As you probably know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, the first accessory I always recommend people to purchase is a cage. And it's not only to help build out the camera to give you more mounting points and protect the camera from drops, but it's also to give the camera a better grip. And that comes to our next topic. Both cameras have one mounting point and both have one hot shoe. What cameras don't have one hot shoe? Both cameras have USB-C, micro HDMI, mic ports, and the ZV-E10 has a headphone jack, which is a game changer for anyone who wants to monitor your audio while you're out in the field. I wouldn't just gloss over this as a little piece of information or a little extra spec that the ZV-E10 has. I think this is a big deal. I have the little ZV-1 and there's been many times where I wish I could just monitor my audio while I'm out in the field and instead I have to rely on the audio levels on the display. This gives the ZV-E10 a huge advantage over the Nikon Z30, especially if you want to really nail that audio and make sure that you don't have any weird sounds coming in to your camera. However, they do both have a mic input jack for external audio integration. I also much prefer the full HDMI port that other cameras have because I've had to use micro HDMI ports in the past, like on my a7 III, for about two years. And over that time, doing a lot of shooting with it, it became loose. So even though both of these cameras have a micro HDMI port, if you use it a lot, you may have to repair it in a few years. And I can't imagine how expensive that would be just to repair it, maybe the same price as getting a used ZV-E10 or a Z30. But if this is your first camera and you don't plan on using an external monitor too much, then that shouldn't be a problem. Another thing to keep in mind is the hot shoe on the ZV-E10 is on the left side of the camera. So if you wanted to add a top handle and you didn't have a cage, then that may pose a lopsided problem for you. Whereas if you purchased a handle without a cage for the Nikon Z30, you'd be centered up for some excellent balance. Speaking about balance, let's talk about stabilization. When it comes to stabilization, both cameras have a 1.5 times crop, so your images will not be very smooth depending on the lens you are using. So I would recommend picking up a gimbal for both cameras if it's in your budget. When it comes to handheld shooting, I would actually pick up a wider lens because that will produce a smoother shot for you than if you were to use a long lens. Also, the ZV-E10 has the option of Catalyst Browse to capture that gyro data, which you can further stabilize in post. I'm gonna give this one to the ZV-E10 because both of their stabilizations when I was walking handheld wasn't that great. And that leads us to our next topic. Both cameras have rolling shutter due to their electronic shutter, which is especially noticeable when you shoot with longer lenses. If you're shooting with the zoom lens, I highly recommend you pick up a monopod like the YC Onion Panetta to stabilize that rolling shutter. If you wanna know more about that YC Onion monopod, I actually made a video about it and I will leave that one in the description below. 
when it comes to overheating, the smaller body of the Nikon Z30, which has no internal fan, has had an unpopular reputation for overheating, especially in warmer climates. It is said to overheat in warmer temperatures after 30 minutes of shooting in 4K. However, it is also said that in 1080, the Z30 can shoot for a little over two hours. I actually had no overheating issues with the camera as I shot in a pretty warm environment. I took it out into a warm and sunny climate for an extended amount of time and I did not have any overheating issues. The ZV-10 also does not have an internal fan, but it doesn't have the same reputation of overheating issues as the Z30. If you're experiencing overheating issues for the ZV-10, you just need to go into the power setting option and then turn the auto power off temp to high. If you do this, the ZV-10 will last for about 90 minutes shooting in 4K if you're lucky. The Z30 shoots around 35 minutes of 4K or 125 minutes of 1080 before having to stop. The last thing that you want is to have your camera or camera gear overheat because then it's lights out. And that brings us to our next topic. The low light performance of both cameras will be relatively the same because they're both APS-C cameras. I found that the base ISO for the ZV-E10 when shooting in S-Log3 and the Z30 is 100. Also, something to keep in mind is I start to see grain once I start to get into that 1600 range. The ISO range for the ZV-E10 is 100 to 32,000, while the Z30 is 100 to 25,600. The Nikon Z30 has a 20 megapixel sensor and the ZV-E10 has a 24 megapixel sensor. They both can shoot in JPEG and RAW. With that said, the Nikon has a color science that I am really fond of and between the two I would probably go with the Z30 for photography, just purely off of looking at the images that I shot while I had the Z30. Both cameras offer different picture profiles that you can easily find in either menu system. The ZV-10 offers Cine 2, S-Log3, along with the HLG picture profile, and Nikon Z30s offers a couple different profiles such as flat and landscape with some different picture looks and control options. All of these different profile settings are there to help you have more control when it comes to grading your footage in post-production. Also, the ZV-E10 has shutter priority while shooting in video, so that's helpful to make sure your shutter speed is always under control. The ZV-E10 is not weather sealed, but the Z30 is weather resistant, giving it an advantage over the ZV-E10, which is definitely something to keep in mind, especially when you're out shooting in maybe rainy weather or snowing. They both have autofocus and manual focus, although in my tests, the ZV-E10 way outperformed the Z30, especially for video, to the point where I almost wondered if maybe I set up something wrong in the Z30 while I was doing the tests. The ZV-E10 locks on focus on the subject's face so fast, and the Z30 was just a little bit slower to respond. Maybe there's something I need to do in the settings. If I missed that, please let me know in the comments. But at least right out of the box, the ZV-E10's autofocus really took the win here. Both cameras take one SD card, which will make it difficult if you're hoping to have that backup card reader while you're shooting, maybe say a client work. You can always purchase an Atomos Ninja 5 because that will come with some media that you can have backup recording, but that's going to put you back about $700. So something to think about while you're shooting with both of these cameras if you plan on doing professional work. I noticed that the battery life in the ZV-E10 was a bit better than the Nikon Z30. I have no idea why this is because they're both APS-C cameras. I was shooting in all different video modes and photography at the same time, and the ZV-E10 just seemed to last a tad longer than the Z30, but it wasn't something that I would fret over, especially because batteries for both of these cameras are pretty cheap, especially off-brand batteries. So I wouldn't consider this to be a huge deal breaker, but the ZV-E10 did last a bit longer. The native audio will be much cleaner out of the ZV-E10 because it has a three-directional mic. I always recommend using a mic setup because that will always sound much better than the native mic that's with inside of the camera. But if you're gonna be using native audio, then I would go with the ZV-E10, especially because the ZV-E10 has a headphone jack. You'll be able to really zero in on the sound to nail your audio. Here's an audio test of the ZV-E10 in the native uh, mic that's inside of the camera and I want to compare that to what it sounds like to the native mic that's inside of the Nikon Z30. This is the audio test for the Nikon Z30. I don't have any audio meter bars on my screen so I don't know what's going on with that. The ZV-E10 also comes with a windscreen which makes it nice for windy environments. 
The ZV-E10 has an intelligent hot shoe that can house a mic like the ECM B10. I'm not sure about what external mics you can hook up to the Z30. If you know, please let me know in the comments. When it comes to lenses, if you're on a budget, then you're gonna wanna go with the ZV-E10 because the lens options will be a lot vaster and cheaper. Also, there are a lot more options for the ZV-E10 than the Z30. That can be a huge advantage, especially if you wanna take your videos to the next level. However, if you already are a Nikon DSLR user, you just can just use an FDZ, FTZ adapter and you can use F mount lenses on it with full functionality. The kit lens that comes with the Z30 is much better than the kit lens that comes with the ZV-E10. The Z mount on the Z30 is a lot newer than Sony's E mount, which makes the Z mount a lot harder to find lenses that'll fit it. You have to ask yourself, what are you planning on shooting? You can clearly cross over both cameras for different uses. You can use the ZV-E10 as a vlog camera and the Nikon Z30 to shoot sports and wildlife. If you plan on making talking head YouTube videos or vlogging, then I would go with the ZV-E10, mainly due to its autofocus and its headphone port. And if you plan on doing just basic YouTube videos, storytelling, or fast paced sports, then I would go with the Nikon Z30. But like I said in the beginning, either one of these cameras will help you achieve whatever it is that you're doing with your cameras, whether it's just photography or videos or even doing pro work. I wouldn't worry too much about not being able to monitor your audio with the Z30. Just keep an eye on those audio levels to make sure nothing's peaking. Maybe bring a laptop or a computer with you so you can pull the SD card out of the camera and go plug it into your computer and then just do a quick test to make sure everything sounds good. You might need to do a little EQ and post, but for the most part, as long as you've got that squared away, then you should be good. So I hope this video helped you out in choosing whichever camera it is that you like better. Please let me know which camera you like better in the comments. I personally like the ZV-E10 better mainly because all of my cameras are Sony, so I'm biased. That's all I own are Sony cameras. Actually, I used to own, I think a Canon T3i. But that was way back in the day and I didn't even know anything about videos. So that's what I like better. Although I do like how nice that color science looks on the Nikon Z30. I would love to take that camera with me and just go shoot a documentary with it and just be creative with it. All right, until the next video, I'm Joe with the Film Alliance. See you next week.